Hey guys, Brady here. Welcome to the fifth game vlog. <laughs> it's I have five game vlogs on my channel right now. First one was Mario Odyssey vs. Breath of the Wild. That was a tie. Um, second one was Lego games. Um, Indiana, Lego Indiana Jones 2 and Lego Star Wars Complete Saga. Indiana Jones won um, because uh, I spent more time on that than I did than I did Complete Saga, but I still like Complete Saga. Um, the third one was Sonic and All Stars Race, the All Stars Racing Games from Sonic and Crew, and the sequel ended up winning. Um, I mean, I love. I mean, I love the first one. I mean, I just prefer the second one. All right, and then the fourth one was Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga versus Bowser's Inside Story. At Bowser's Inside Story ended up winning. So, what what do you say we talk about the Nicktoons Unite games? A crossover of so many lovable Nickelodeon shows like SpongeBob, Jimmy Neutron, Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, so many franchises into one big crossover. Gee, I wish that someone else would have done that. But let's hope they do it right. Unlike Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion. Um, so, but, what you don't know is that there's actually sequels to Nicktoons Unite. Two, in fact. The first, alright, so, today's matchup. We have Nicktoons Attack of the Toybots vers versus Nicktoons Globs of Doom. Or, or Spongebob Squarepants featuring Nicktoons Globs of Doom. I don't know, that, that, that title just doesn't make any sense. Um, so, I like both of these games for many, many specific reasons. Attack of the Toybots for it being my one of my childhood DS games, having an insane challenge, and having multiple characters spanned across multiple different shows. And I like Globs of Doom for it having an original story, having... Um, good guys and bad guys to play as, and having a variety of characters to save. But you're probably asking yourself, Brady, which one wins the competition? Which one is the true sequel? Which one makes sense? Which one is better in every, in every way? Well, we're going to talk about it, starting, of course, with the game that came out first, um, in 2007, I think, same year as Mario Galaxy, um, I mean, I mean, I think it's 2007, I could be wrong, it's 2007, yes. Um, Nicktoons Attack of the Toybots. Now, Attack of the Toybots here, um, was actually the third game in the series. The second game was Nicktoons Battle for Volcano Island, which I have not played yet. I want to play it, though, because it looks like, um, it literally looks like, um, Attack of the Toy, the same engine as, yeah, well, Battle for Volcano Island, um, had the engine that, um, this game had, but Battle for Volcano Island passed the engine that that game had to Attack of the Toy Bots, so technically, this game is the third game in the series. And, there is so much content in this game, actually. I'm talking, like, two, uh, two-player modes, um, different characters to play as, cheat codes to unlock specific, two specific characters, um, neither of which are all that fun, um, and of course, um, having a plethora of different, um, factories to visit. So the story for this game here is that Spongebob and Patrick go to this robot factory for some reason. Come on guys, Spongebob and Patrick are Nonsense are uh, nautical nonsense makers. Um, reference to the theme song, by the way. Um, and Patrick gets captured, and so SpongeBob is like, "I gotta go be inside and save my best friend." And so he d tries to do so, but he fails because only robots are allowed in the factory for some reason. I don't, I don't even know why that would make any sense. But so he dresses up as a robot. Hijinks ensues. Therefore, you are um, instantly thrown into a adventure with um, the following characters that you see on the screen right here, uh, on the box art. Um, trust me, there's 
more characters than these five, honestly. <laughs> these are just the characters that um they wanted to advertise on the box. All right, you got SpongeBob, Patrick, Jimmy, Danny, and Tack. Who remembers Tack? I do. I never watched it. I mean, yeah, I never watched it, but I've heard of it. And I've also heard of the game that it's um that it has as well. Tack has his own game, by the way, guys. Many games in his series. Um, but there's also um Timmy Turner, um, Stimpy, Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life, uh, Jenny from My Life as a Teenage Robot, Gurr from Invader Zim. Hmm. I think that's it. And Sam from Danny Phantom. Yeah, that's right, two Danny Phantom characters, because apparently Butch Hartman wants to promote his series, so what better way to do so than add two characters from the same series? You're welcome. Um, so, therefore, um, you, you travel across an assortment of different factories and, um, try to escape them in order to stop the evil, um, Professor Calamus from Jimmy Neutron. And basically, this whole, th this whole game is just a game show. Even the, yeah, even the game is not shy enough to, um, no, yeah, isn't even shy to, um, mention the fact that this is just a game show. Even the intro explains how it is. Basically, Professor Calamitous is stuck- is in this little container thing, and he's, like, um, talking to the audience, and he's, like- and the audience can hear him. And you see him throughout most of the cutscenes, he's like, Two, two, is this thing on? See what happens when fairies eat too many Krabby Patties. They create natural gas. And basically what he's trying to do, he's trying to get Krabby Patties, fairies, and ghost energy to stop the good guys. <laughs> Krabby Patties, fairies, and ghost energy. These three things are part of the plot, basically. And there's that. And you may see that there's robots on the bottom. Y yes, there is. Um, basically, the another main point of this game is the mech sections. As you see on the back, you may notice SpongeBob in a mech? That wasn't in the cartoon show. Well, apparently in this game it, it exists. Throughout most of the story, you'll enter these things called mech zones, and you have to choose a, um, a character that has a mech. Basically, every character has a mech, except for, um the ones that you save. The only characters that have a mech are Spongebob, Patrick, Jimmy, Tack, Danny, Sam, and Timmy. That's it. No one else has a mech. Um, so yeah. Um, and not to mention that this game is really, really insanely hard. I am not pulling your leg. I am definitely- I'm not even kidding. This game is so- Balls to the wall difficult. The precise platforming is so uneven, and you have to perform specific, um, you know, moves to um, surpass the next level. Is there even a reason for the difficulty? I played the DS version, and it also has hard difficulty. So maybe that this. So maybe this is um. The Battle Kid of um, the Nicktoons games, <laughs> or something like that. It doesn't make it doesn't make you rage really hard like Battle Kid. It's it's got a dif a difficulty of some sort. It's not it, it's not like intense difficulty um, like Cuphead or whatever or Mega Man. It's just hard, simple, pure hard, nothing else, and. That's basically all I can say about it. Controls are good, but the only worst thing about it is that you gotta press the down. You use the nunchuck and Wii mode, right? As you can see on the back right there, you can use the nunchuck and Wii mode, and that's literally it. That's the only control you could use throughout this entire game. And you have to press the down button on the D-pad to attack. Why can't I just use the B button? Well, the B button allows you to crouch. Is that a design flaw? I think this is... It is I think it's a controller flaw. All right, anyways, pretty nice game. Now, let's check out the game that came out one year uh, one year after um, Attack of the Toy Bots, Globs of Doom. I just finished completing this game rather recently, and let me tell you, folks, 
This game actually came out the exact same year as Crash Mind Over Mutant, and I'm not kidding. It it, it came out in 2008, the same year as Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts and Crash Mind Over Mutant. You have to think about that. Two bad games came out that year, and this is one of those good games that came out that year. <laughs> um, and later, next year, we'll be getting New Super Mario Bros. U. No, New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Um, Punch-Out! and A Boy and His Blob. We, we would get all those games. And th this was able for us... But this was for us to hold our... Hold on to our helmets until 2009. <laughs> um, but yeah, the controls have actually been fixed. Therefore, you can no longer crouch, which is which makes it easier for you to platform. And, you know, I mean, crouching can also lead to rolling, which makes you go faster in the previous game. However, I don't know if the developers, which are... You see that this game is made by THQ. This one is made by Play THQ. You know, THQ, the company that went bankrupt and then, turned in, and then met up with Nordic to turn into t THQ Nordic. You're welcome, folks. Um, so, yeah, the controls are a bit more better than ever in this game. You actually use the B button to attack, and um, the Z button to use your um, special move. And not to mention that, that there's also um, ex another move that you can do if you collect blue sparkles. You fill up this gauge at, that's on your HUD it shows a blue gauge, and if you feel that gauge to the top, you will get a specific super move. Which is actually kind of useful for combat, that is. Because some, um, and by the way, I forgot to mention the story. The story here is that, um, Spongebob, yeah, we always have to start off with Spongebob's world, um, apparently, Spongebob's world, Bikini Bottom, gets invaded with these things called Morphoids, and... What they are are basically they're Nicktoon they're Nick, they're Nickelodeon slime but orange the the Nickelodeon orange slime yeah that that shows how original this game is the original story and whatnot um and so it's up to SpongeBob Jimmy Danny Tack not Patrick for some reason or Timmy Timmy is nowhere in this game because Butch Hartman was like you know I don't want really my parents in my game anymore. So why not, so why not even include them at all? Let's just have Danny Phantom. <laughs> um, so, and of course, um, Zim is playable, because Zim was also playable in the DS version of Attack of the Toybots. I don't know why you would include Gurr. I mean, Gurr is the comedic relief in Zim, as, as well as um, Zim himself. Um, but it made no sense for Gurr to be a character, but it made sense at the same time. So, and then the villains come in. And they're like, we want to help too. So we get, um, Plankton is playable, apparently. And three other characters you may not know. Um, Beautiful Gorgeous from Jimmy Neutron, Trela from Tack and the Power of Juju, and Technus from Danny Phantom. Why not, um, what's his name? V Vlad Plasma or something like that? He was in Nicktoons Unite as one of the main villains. Um, and... Dib, for some reason, is playable. And then, it, it actually makes kind of, it kind of does make sense considering Zim, Zim is the main character and Dib is trying to stop him from, you know, doing some crazy crap that no other cartoon character would do. And it actually leads into an interesting little scene where, he, where Plankton's like, You're joining our side? And, and then Dib's like, I'm one of the villains. If Zim's over there, then I'm over here. Um, so, yeah. And so, hijinks ensues once again as you try to go stop the Morphoids from taking over the world, all leading up to an interesting final boss, with the great, powerful, Globulus Maximus. I don't know if I like that name or not. Um, but at the end, the villains are like, we want to betray them! <laughs> and so, they, um, apparently get... Uh, the good guys apparently get Globulus Maximus to go attack the e the um, evil doers that betrayed us, and yet again we also played as the evil doers throughout the most of this game. <laughs> Jeez. Um. So yes. Um. There's that. Um. And 
basically the rest of the story before the final boss is that you got to collect these pieces to build this thing called the Vessel of Portentia, which is basically this giant robot rocket ship where you... Yeah, it's a giant robot rocket ship that um, tra that lets you travel to space to take down Globulus Maximus, only to find out that the villains are like, we want to think evil thoughts and betray and betray um, the characters that we helped in the first place. And so Globulus Maximus turns into SpongeBob for some reason and calls him Sponge Glob um, and goes to take out the Vessel of Portentia, the thing that we, uh, the thing that we built during this adventure. But yeah, great game, tight controls, good, um, amazing original story, and that's basically all I could say about it. So, in the end, what, who is the winner? Folks, we have a tie again. We have another tie. It's unusual for me to have a tie, but both games are so good in every way. Despite one flaw for, 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 there's one flaw for both game. The flaw for Globs of Doom is that it isn't as, it's a little bit more colorful and as opposed to dark, it, like this game. And it's, it's more dark as opposed to colorful. But the other flaw about this game is the controls and the insane difficulty. But I definitely recommend you go check out both of these games um, for Wii, PS3, Xbox, or DS. I think they're on Xbox, I don't know. But one thing's for sure, I'd recommend both. So thank you guys so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more game vlogs in the future. See you guys soon. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but it's going to be something. Sayonara, peeps. Take care.